Hey, Indy, do you know what European country finally and legally last abolished slavery? Uh, Nazi Germany. Nope. The Soviet Union. Well, according to some, they never abolished slavery, but finally they abolished themselves. But, eh. no. Okay, I know where you're going with this. You're going to say, I know you're going to say Sweden and the Stortere system, right? Yes. Yeah. That was only abolished in November of 1945. Yeah, but that's not, that wasn't slavery. Well, it wasn't by then, but about half a century earlier it was, okay. sort of. Okay, you're going to grab that elk by the horns, right? Yeah, yeah, man, son. Okay. Well, fan, there will be no cool commentary. I'm Indy Nidell, and this is another Time Goes Short, where we spoil some aspect of history. I'm Spartak Solson, and today we're going after Sweden's image as a historical bastion of eternal progressive liberalism. So, my adopted home country, his country of origin, prides itself as never having had serfs and no slaves after the early Middle Ages. Technically, that isn't wrong. Uh -huh. Sweden was founded in 1523, although like any European, Swedes will tell you that its uninterrupted history goes back to antiquity. Anyway, serfdom and slavery was abolished in the region that eventually became Sweden already in 1335 by the local ruler Magnus Eriksson and the law text known as Skora Stadga. Yeah, 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 okay. We should be careful here not to attribute too much veracity to that text, as the only extant copy is from the 17th century. We do, however, know that the practice of holding slaves disappears north of Scania, or Skåne in Swedish, which was not Sweden then, but was Danish crown lands around that time. Which, by the standard of the time, is indeed some remarkable social progress as across the rest of Europe, and the world for that matter, a huge amount of people lived as indentured farm workers that could be sold or traded with the land they worked. Now, that could create a labor shortage for big landowners, right? Except Sweden at the time is located in a huge wilderness and has almost no people. And that isn't true in 2021? Anywho, the need for agricultural labor eventually gives rise to the torpare. Subsistence farmers granted small plots of land for their own sustenance against work on the big landowners' farms and in their forestries. By the 17th century, Sweden is a major military power, right. which needs soldiers. So in 1681, King Charles XI, called den tolt elfte, elfte, sorry, introduces the soldat torpare, or Rute farmers, young men granted small plots of land against military service as foot soldiers. But Sweden's time as a mighty superpower is soon over, and although the system of military service provided by small farms will remain in place all the way until 1901, its importance and numbers really decline, and the landowners again have a labor shortage problem. By the mid-18th century, the solution becomes to employ families to work the land in one year binding contracts against payment in kind. That is, no money, but food and other stuff. Other stuff. <laughs> by, by the early 1800s, there are several hundred thousand individuals in this system. And remember, Sweden has very few people. By some accounts, as much as 40% of the population are caught in the solitary system at its height. But it was probably less than that. Okay, payment in kind is not in and of itself slavery, but a few things do lead to them being in bondage to their employers. First of all, their remuneration is often not nearly enough to survive the food and stuff they get. They can't live on. They end up living under rather dismal conditions as well. Drafty houses, little food, no hygiene, the hallmarks of destitution. And they have no money. So the solution is that the farm owners sell them stuff on credit. Which leads to debt bondage, which is just a fancy word for enslavement. Now, statistically, we don't know exactly how prevalent it becomes, but prevalence is anecdotally well documented. What we do have recorded are countless accounts when stotere in debt bondage are sold between landowners by transferring the debt against cash payment. And consider that in the 19th century, overdue debt is still a criminal offense, so Stotter finding themselves in debt bondage are at real risk of ending up in debtor's prison. We even have accounts of farmers selling Stotter contracts at auction. This is often the fate, true story, of older Stotter who are less attractive to the labor market. With no practical prospect of free choice of contract, they are de facto an unfree, tradable labor commodity. 
then there are the rights of agricultural employers to exercise executive violence under the Liegustad Galal. Before the 1830s, the head of the households even has the right to exercise corporal punishment at will on members of the household, including employees. Then the 1833 version of this law restricts corporal punishment to only be allowed for boys under 18 and girls under 16. Okay, I'm thinking about that, and that sounds like a like a whole new bucket load of problems right there. Okay, anyway, even after 1833, the master of the house retains the right to dock payments, impose forced labor, and many other things at their own, it's their own behest. They can even get help by the police to enforce this without going to court. Finally, there is the obligatory employment law that dictates that a person unable to find gainful employment can be forced to enter or renew a stalter contract under threat of imprisonment. Okay, but as the 1800s progress and Sweden industrializes and liberal ideas of human rights start to take root, these practices come under increasing criticism. In 1885, the obligatory employment and Legostad laws are abolished, effectively ending legalized slavery in Sweden, so why did you say 1945, Sparty? Well, while the law is creating a compound of serfdom change, the Sauter system of work against subsistence payment in kind is only abolished in a collective labor agreement that enters into effect in November 1945. November 1945, gotcha, 1945 it is. Now, we're fairly sure that any fellow Swedes out there who are by now steaming from their ears will also take great pleasure in our condensed debunking of the Vikings, which you can check out right over my face. Subscribe and join the Time Ghost Army at patreon.com or timeghost.tv to keep us fighting the good fight of abolishing historical myths. Like the wheel. Excelsior! Excelsior!